Hey, welcome to Scanner School. This is session number 191. We are talking today about TDMA control channels on P25 phase two systems. This is something that is very recent if you listen to this podcast episode live as it releases in August of 2021. We are going to talk all about what this means for the scanner ready hobby, what changes, how it was discovered, and what this could mean going forward. So is the scanner radio hobby in danger? I don't think so. But that's a spoiler we'll talk about later on in the podcast. So as usual, all the session notes can be found online today at scannerschool.com slash session one ninety one. I do have a resource in there as well for some of the you know where I got some of this information from. So with that, stand by and we'll get this podcast episode started. Today's podcast is sponsored by our two brand new training courses. Our free SDR course, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Software to Fine Radio, will get you started with SDRs in an afternoon. We will show you what hardware and accessories to buy to get started with Software to Fine Radio. Then we'll show you the step-by-step how-to to to install the drivers, tune your first frequency with SDR Sharp, and then have you monitoring digital at the end of this free course. Our advanced course continues with beginner's course left off and levels up your SDR experience. In this course, you'll learn even more about software-defined radio. We will show you how you can substitute an SDR for your high-end digital scanner, how to monitor HD radio, monitor trunk systems, and overhead data with Unitrunker, and even how to monitor all the talk groups on a system and never miss a beat with SDR trunk. You can sign up for both courses at courses.scannerschool.com. Before we start this week's podcast, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. Patreon is a month-to-month sponsorship platform. We have three different support tiers, each with different benefits. But the most valuable tier is our $5 a month tier. This equates to sponsoring the podcast for about a dollar per episode. Now, not only do our $5 Patreon supporters receive the podcast early, but they also receive a commercial-free version of the podcast delivered directly to their podcast player. Some may say that the included squelchy sticker pack that is mailed to your home is the best benefit of the $5 level, but I think it's the community or the club that is growing at this level. You see, we meet once a month on Zoom, and we have a roundtable discussion about scanning, ask questions, offer advice. Some of the members are answering other people's questions, and we just talk with our fellow scanner school classmates. This is an exclusive group for our $5 Patreon members. Now, again, if all this wasn't enough at that level, you'll also receive discounts to upcoming Scanner School courses and offerings. Now, you can help support Scanner School by going to www.scannerschool.com slash Patreon or www.scannerschool.com slash support. Now, I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters at all levels, and they are Arthur Huron, Bill K, Brian King, Buzz Gold, Chris Paris, Craig Harper, Dan, Dave Pasco, David C, Danny Crotty, Ed Walsh, Edward Bramblett, Glenn Wright, Greg Johnson, Guy Lee, Jay Haycock, Jack Barry, James Broxson, James Felling, James Peruta, Jay Reed, Jeff Block, Jeff Chapman, Jenny Taylor, Jim B, Jim Heinrich, John Keel, John Sweeney, John Goldenberg, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Kevin Zwicky, Lenny Bauer, Les Stevenson, Lynn Smith, Mark Beebe, Mason Kramer, Michael Gorman, Michael Kroger, Nicholas Stenger, Paul Teal, Raymond Hill, Robert, Robert Kanzler, Robert Kanzler, again, Ronnie Box, Sal Marandola, Terry Weatherford, Tim Mazza, TJ, Todd Glendi, and William Arcand. Now let's start the podcast. Welcome to The Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. So welcome to Scanner School. This podcast is here to teach you Everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. Again, my name is Phil Lichtenberger, and my amateur radio call sign is W2LIE. Now, again, as a reminder, I am always looking to answer your questions, and I need them for our very next Ask Scanner School podcast, which always releases on the first Tuesday of every month. You could submit your questions via our voicemail line at 516 308 2885 or by using our speak pipe link or even our email form over at scannerschool.com slash ask. So today we're talking about the current, current scanner radio killer TDMA control channels. Now I'm calling this the current scanner radio killer, not the killer of scanner radio hobbies. Okay. These are hurdles. These are hurdles that we've overcome in the past. And we're going to talk about all this and we are going to calm the panic. 
in today's podcast episode. But before we calm the panic, let's talk about the facts. Let's talk about what's going on here, why it's causing people to get so upset, and what this means right now for the scanner radio hobby. So again, we are talking about P25 TDMA control channels. This isn't to be confused with TDMA, aka P25 phase two voice channels. They are completely different. So last month, July of 2021, several users on Radio Reference posted that they've noticed that local P25 systems started coming online with TDMA control channels. So what does this mean? Let's back things up a little bit. Let's talk about P25 and what P25 is. Well, P25 is a true digital transmission. There's no analog whatsoever on P25. This is why you can't get old Motorola Type 2 systems confused with P25 systems. Type 2 systems still allow analog voice channels with some digital talk groups as well. P25, strictly only digital. The initial release of P25 was FDMA. That's phase one. And what FDMA stands for is frequency, division, multiple access. What this means in the simplest form, now again, this is a repeat for a lot of people, but again, for those of you who are coming into the podcast new, we're covering this topic for you, right? So you're not left in the dark here. So FDMA, frequency, division, multiple access, basically means when a user keys up, they own that 12.5 kilohertz wide frequency, okay? It's theirs. Nobody else can use it. That one time slot, oh, I'm sorry, that one talk group, I'm jumping the gun here, that one talk group is tied up by that one frequency. Think about analog, right? When somebody comes on the air and they're talking analog, you're on that frequency. They're not sharing it with anybody else at the same time. They might be de-keying and then the next person replies, then they de-key and the first person comes back, right? You're split up by frequencies. Now, if you've got a dispatch channel and a fire ground channel, well, they're on two separate frequencies. Then if you have a, 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 a dispatch, a fire ground, and an admin channel, right, they're on free, three frequencies. I'm starting to get tongue twisted here. You see where I'm going with this, right? Every user on the system, if they want to come up on the same time, needs separate frequencies. So they're frequency divided. Phase two brings in some fancy stuff here, and we are now talking about TDMA, which is time division multiple access. And what that basically means is that over time, multiple users can share the same frequency, the same resource. And this happens extremely quick. We can't hear it. It happens so fast. We're talking milliseconds, all right? And what ends up basically happening is on a two-way radio network is only divided into two time slots. Time slot one, time slot two, or if you're talking about in a base zero, it's time slot zero, time slot one, all right? Just understand there's only two time slots here. And what ends up basically happening is over the course of milliseconds, if not microseconds, the time slot basically is is shifted from one to the other. So it's time slot one, time slot two, time slot one, time slot two. Again, all this has to do with specific timings. And when you got uh, multiple sites, then you've got to have GPS synchronization between sites so that everything happens all at the exact same time. It's very complicated when you think about it, but very simple when you understand it. Okay. All what I'm talking about complication is how it's put into place, right? All of these multiple transmitter sites on a simulcast system must be in sync in order for all this to work out. Your radio must be able to receive things and put things back into sync. It's FM. It's it's magic. It's it's freaking magic. FM, right? That's what we call it here. So now that we understand the difference between FDMA and TDMA, every single P25 system out there up until this point has used an FDMA control channel. Basically, you've got one frequency. That one frequency is the control channel. It doesn't do anything else. It's just the control channel. Well, if you've guessed that TDMA now splits that one frequency and only uses half of it for the control channel or the first time slot for the control channel, hey, you are following along and you understand what we're going through here. So let's start breaking down where this was found and how this was found, et cetera, et cetera, and, and why right now you shouldn't panic. So the systems that this have, have been isolated to at this point have been Harris systems, not Motorola systems. 
How can you tell on your scanner if you're monitoring a Harris system or a Motorola system? Well, the Wacken typically on a Motorola system, I don't know if they got lazy or they just wanted to standardize it, but BEE00, or is it BE000? I think it's BEE00 off the top of my head now, is Motorola, right? Any other numerical change on that typically is Harris. Harris did a really good job at assigning each one of their own systems a unique ID. Motorola didn't. So if you've got a BEE00 Wacken, you are pretty much a Motorola system. But will this come to Motorola? It's possible. But right now, we're only seeing these on Harris systems. Number two, we're only seeing these on energy company P25 systems that are being deployed now, multi-state, multi-county systems, such as Duke Energy's multi-system state, or multi-state system, rather, is the way dyslexia kicking in. And users on Radio Reference really started noticing in 2021 that Duke had been granted licenses by the FCC, and we're going to start developing a new trunk system. So the other thing to look out for here is this is a brand new build. Right? This isn't an existing system that transitioned over from a FDMA control channel to a TDMA control channel. So, again, don't panic over, will I now lose this because of that? No. Right now, it just seems like it is just new systems. Another system that came online is the um, as, as TDMA control channels is the American Power and Electric Company as well. So, let's talk about where we can find the specifications on this and what this means and how it can be deployed. And in order to do that, we're going to look at the project25.org website. There's a couple of white papers there. And the one we're going to look at here is a P25 TDMA control channel final document, which is underscore underscore 170915.pdf. Well, again, we're going to put a link to this PDF file in the session notes over at scannerschool.com slash session 191 so that you can not only follow along with what I'm going to speak basically from the document verbatim here, but you can grab a copy of the document yourself and see some of the images that are in there as well. So basically what we have here, and again, I'm not reading the entire document. I'm just reading what is specific to the TDMA control channel here is that it says, and I quote, as I read directly from the document, a new addition to the P25 suite of standards defines a TDMA control channel for P25 trunking operations. Similar to the FDMA control channel, the TDMA control channel includes an inbound or radio to infrastructure channel, which is used for individual or group services request for voice, data, or supplementary services. It also includes an outbound a.k.a. infrastructure to radio channel, which broadcasts system information, control signaling, and provides call assignments. Basically, what the breaking down here is what the TDMA channel can be used for. Basically, it's what we're listening to on our scanners, right? We are listening to the P25 trunk system tell all the users out there, including our scanner, what is going on on the system, what talk groups are being granted, where to go if you want to monitor a particular talk group, okay? This is what they're talking about here. Okay, so let's talk about the overview here. So from the document, again, the TDMA control channel supports the same functionality as the FDMA control channel. However, with the use of the TDMA control channel, a single 12.5 kilohertz channel supports two virtual channels and can be configured to utilize both, I'm sorry, utilize one or both virtual channels for inbound outbound signaling. A P25 trunk system with a TDMA control channel can be deployed in the same type of configurations as current trunked systems, such as single site, multi site, or multi site trunked and conventional overlay. A single logical TDMA control channel may designate either a virtual channel or a slot of the two slot TDMA physical radio channel as a control channel. In this case, control channel signaling is conveyed between the infrastructure and the radio population at the site on one of the virtual channels, and the other virtual channel is available for use as a traffic channel. A dual logical TDMA control channel designates both virtual ta- channels, both slots basically, of a two-slot TDMA physical radio channel as control channels. In this case, control channel signaling is conveyed between the infrastructure and the radio population at the site on both virtual channels. The radio monitors both outbound virtual channels for outbound control channel signaling and uses the first inbound virtual channel available for the inbound control channel signaling. 
The protocol for outbound two-slot TMA physical radio channels includes signaling information between each slot that is used to receiving radios. The signaling information informs listening stations whether the two-slot TMA physical radio channel is being used for voice signaling or control signaling. If the indication is for a control channel signaling, the additional information is provided and inform the radio of a single logical control channel or dual logical control channel's operation. If single logical control channel operation is indicated, additional information is provided that informs the radio which virtual channel is being used to control the signaling. Composite TDMA control channel operations is a special case of a single channel TDMA control channel. A TDMA call is granted that converts the logical control channel into a traffic channel. The logical control channel is reestablished when the logical TDMA channel capable of acting as a control channel becomes available. That's a mouthful right there. Basically, what are they saying there? They're saying that a single FDMA channel can be a single TDMA one slot control channel with a spare slot for voice, or they can have two control channels on one one frequency, right? The TDMA can be split and can run two control channels. Why would you want to do this? Well, they explained it in here. But basically, if a system is busy and a lot of data needs to go out on the control plane, then they can have two control channels to process all that data. Likewise, they can have an inbound and outbound split between that as well. So you would see traffic uh, requests and stuff like that from the radios on the secondary. So let's talk about from the white paper, the benefits of the TDMA control channel before we wrap up this document here. So the TDMA control channel can provide benefits to an agency or system manager once all the radios in the system support TDMA operation and are also capable of supporting the TDMA control channel. Several example scenarios are envisioned where the TDMA control channel can benefit P25 users. Perhaps the most obvious benefit is realized in low-density user situations where a relatively low amount of call traffic is expected and only a single 12.5 kHz physical channel is available. In this situation, use of a single logical TDMA control channel allows the system designer to configure the site with a dedicated control and traffic functionality while only provisioning a single 12.5 kHz channel. In this configuration, a single TDMA radio channel would utilize one virtual channel for control signaling and one virtual channel here. Basically, what they're saying in the document is you only need one physical frequency to run a trunk system, right? You have the control channel on one half of the frequencies in TDMA, and the second half of that frequency on TDMA is being used for the voice channel. All right, we're going to skip the rest of this section as not to bore you and basically get you into how they're going to transition these sites into TDMA. So it says for system managers with existing P25 trunk systems, the transition to a TDMA control channel requires planning. The system infrastructure, including the base stations and core equipment, will need to have the necessary software revision to support the feature. An important consideration is that under typical conditions, a site which utilizes the TDMA control channel will only support TDMA-capable subscriber radios, which also includes the TDMA control channel capability. However, with radio equipment capable of supporting both FDMA and TDMA traffic and traffic channels, a site with TDMA control channel can still support an FDMA traffic call assignment when multi-site calls demand FDMA for interoperability with FDMA-only radios. Note that when these multi-site calls do include FDMA-only radios, vocoder parameter conversions, also referred to as transcoding, may be used. This allows a multi-site call to be signed as an FDMA at some sites and TDMA on other sites. Therefore, it is essential that the system manager performs a thorough inventory of a subscriber base and roaming requirements for all agencies supported by the system, including visiting radios from interoperability and roaming partners. Failure to consider all potential users of the system may result in unforeseen interoperability issues. So, if you have a current FDMA control channel, There is a lot that has to happen, basically, is what they're warning you. So do you expect to have all of a sudden now overnight all of your standard 
P25 systems to go over to TDMA, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect that anytime soon because, again, interoperability, FDMA. And again, if your system has FDMA control, uh, FDMA voice channels, again, how we know? Because you see a D in radio reference instead of a T on that talk group. They're going to migrate them all over to TDMA anyway first. You would see that happening. All right. I'm jumping the gun here. I'm, I'm making the case for what not to worry about before this commercial break. So, again, if you're a Patreon supporter at the $5 level, you don't hear this break coming up. We'll see you in two seconds. But for everybody else, again, you can join us over at Patreon. Now at an annual membership over at scannerschool.com slash Patreon or scannerschool.com slash support. All right, guys. We'll be right back. Did you know there are ways to help support the Scanner School podcast that doesn't take any time or any extra money on your part? If you go to scannerschool.com slash support, you will find we have several ways that you can continue to do your online shopping and help support us. We have links to Amazon. If you click on our link before you go to Amazon, anything you buy from there will help support Scanner School. Now, if you're in a market for a brand new scanner, an antenna, other accessories, we have links to Scanner Master, where you can not only purchase a scanner and accessories, but you can also get your radio programmed. And by clicking on our link before you buy, you are helping to support the podcast. Now, if you're in a market for software, we have links to Butel. And if you want something new to you, we also have links to eBay. Again, just go to scannerschool.com slash support before you make your purchases and you are helping to support Scanner School at no additional cost to you. This session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies, and we are a Unication, Apollo, and Swiss phone dealers serving the North American market. Now, if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, we can get you a quote at the very best prices. So why does a company like East Coast Pagers support Scanner School? I think that every Scanner Radio user should at least put one pager in their collection of radios. The reason why is very simple. It frees up your scanner to just do scanning, and then you have one radio that's dedicated to your local fire activity. Now, with a pager, you can have voice storage. You can do tone outs. You can keep it silent. You can go back the next day and listen to what you've missed overnight. It's more than you can do with an out-of-the-box scanner. And with today's pagers having multiple frequencies and even having multiple channels in a scan list, like the Unication G1 can do eight channels in a scan list. It has 64 memory channels, and out of the box, it comes with 11 minutes of stored voice and a desktop charger. The G2s to G5s, they do P25 phase one and phase two in simulcast environments with stored voice, paging on conventional NP25. Oh, and they're upgradable too to DMR type one and type two. They are more rugged than today's consumer based scanners. And with a pager like a Swiss phone S quad, you won't even realize you're wearing one. It'll help keep you informed as to what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, eastcoastpagers.com or contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com. Do you have a new scanner? You're having problems understanding how it works. Maybe you're new to the entire Home Patrol database of programming and you can't figure out Sentinel. Did you get a new SDR and you're trying to figure out how to install it or you want to learn how to use Unitrunker, DSD+, Plus, maybe set up a Pioware or even just make some changes and you don't understand how this system and the equipment works? The podcast might be great for you, but maybe you need a little bit more of one-on-one help with setting something up. I'm available to do just that with you with our private tutoring sessions. You can book me online by going to scannerschool.com slash consulting for a one-hour session. And it's great because we can actually share computer screens remotely, and I can guide you through step-by-step as if I was sitting right next to you. So again, book me for an hour at scannerschool.com slash consulting for your scanner radio one-on-one tutoring session. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and two-way radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your NatCom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues too. So visit natcommag.com. Dot com to download your free sample issues and sign up today. That's natcommag.com for National Communications Magazine. Okay, so we jumped the gun a little bit before the break. We're going to continue with that over here, right? So is this a scanner radio killer? 
Not right now. No. Okay. Calm down. The sky's not falling. Things don't have to panic. We're okay. All right. Again, like I said before the break here, current P25 systems would have to migrate over to TDMA. The only way they're going to be able to do that, first and foremost, is if they have TDMA-only talk groups. Okay, what if they already have TDMA talk groups? They have to go into planning, too, and make sure that you know they can still support FDMA groups, which, again, I assume they can because it's backwards comp- compatibility, especially if they have an FDMA or a one-channel control channel, right? But this is also on new builds. That's the other problem here, right? So it's only new trunk systems. And it seems to only be Harris trunk systems right now. So you need to basically have a non-existent trunk system that's just being built that is going to be done by Harris. And it seems like for utility companies, calm down, okay? This isn't going to be the end of scanning again, all right? But let's calm the waters even further, all right? Any of you guys remember when Motorola released trunking and no scanner could do trunking? What happened? The hobby evolved. We first got scanner radios that could understand Motorola Type 1 systems back in the day. Now, you had to know a thing or two about this trunk system before you could program it into your scanner. You had to know the fleet and the layout and the channel spacing. And uh, what else was there that was involved? There was, there was fleet tables. Wasn't there fleet tables or there's channel plan or band plan tables? And they were they ended up being able to be programmed into the radio, but you had to know what the what the steps were in order to properly program in a type one system on your scanner. And the talk groups were were a bit different. They were uh, more of a agency and subfleet type of type of feature. So like zero zero dash zero zero one would have been a talk group. And when you program these into your scanner, your entire bank was dedicated to just Motorola. Type 1 scanning. You couldn't mix and match conventional and trunking. You couldn't mix and match, again, multiple types of trunking systems like you can on today's scanner. Okay, The scanner radio hobby evolved to be able to monitor Motorola Type 1 trunking. Okay, The hobby had to catch up. Then eventually, EDAX. Then LTR, right? This is where we got our Type 1, Type 2, Type 3 scanners from. Don't forget, too, we all of a sudden went through a rebanding process, I don't know, 15 to current years. I mean, I think we just got notice not too long ago that rebanding has finally been completed. And that required scanners that would take firmware upgrades via the computer. Not all scanners did that. A lot of scanners couldn't play on Motorola systems after rebranding, right? But with the times changing, technology changing, and understanding how the hobby was changing manufacturers allowed us to put rebanding tables in their scanners. Because remember, Motorola, everything was hard-coded as part of the code on Type 2 scanning. Why would we ever have to change the trunking tables? Nobody could ever see into the future and realize that Nextel and Public Safety would be swapping Spectrum and going 15 plus, 15 minus, right? That's what happened here. So we had to be able to tell our radios that, oh, something changed in the standard. Right, this changed the hobby. All our radios off the shelves now that support trunking support firmware upgrades now. Right, it's part of understanding that we might need to be able to do this in the future in our scanners. So this is something that we can plan for now. In addition to now, all of a sudden coming out of an analog world into a digital world, we were introduced by P25 flavored scanners. Yeah, they only did phase one. But eventually, we would get to an environment where scanners did phase two, and then DMR, and then NXDN, and then Pro Voice was supported on the old EDAX networks. Think about it. You know, the old HP1, the old Home Patrol, they actually sent out beta firmware to see if it would work on phase two systems, discovering that the hardware in the radio was not powerful enough to start working through TDMA and they had to come out with new hardware. Oh no, does that mean we need more hardware now? Don't know. We're so early right now in this. We got to find out, can current hardware that's out there, that's currently being marketed, will that support or will it have the horsepower 
to be able to monitor a TDMA control channel and then go out there and, and do TDMA voice, then come back to a TDMA control channel? Or will it need more hardware? We'll find out. But if it doesn't need new hardware, it probably just needs a new firmware upgrade. Okay? And that's just as simple as downloading it off the internet, plugging your scanner into your computer, and pushing the firmware upgrade to your radio. But what happens if you live in an area today and you want to listen to a P25 Phase 2 control channel? I'm sorry, we should say P25 TDMA control channel. With the advent of software-defined radios and computer-controlled decoding and, and converting of that digital signal into something we can listen to, would you believe that in a couple of days... Many popular pieces of software were patched to allow for monitoring of TDMA control channels, such as DSD Plus and OP25, and even Blue Tail Technologies P25RX hardware. Because, again, that's just software radio based anyway. So, with software defined radios and software that runs on your computer that actually takes the RF or the or the information from your SDR and runs it through your computer it's already patched and good to go so here's what I'm saying to you this is not going to be a hobby killer this is going to be the next evolution in scanner radios we already have things in place on the software-defined radio world. Now, again, if you want to get into software-defined radios, I invite you to check out our two courses over at courses.scannerschool.com where we have a free and a paid course that will take you through software-defined radios. So calm down, guys. This is nothing to be upset about right now. This is just the next step, the next hurdle, the next evolution in the scanner radio hobby. Now, if we do need new hardware, this could be the catalyst to see something new from a company we haven't seen anything new with in a long time. And I'm looking at you, Whistler. Will we have an update to the TRX-1 and TRX-2 if these pieces of hardware do not support TDMA control channels? I'm not saying they they can't, right? But it would be interesting to see if new hardware would have to be deployed. I'm also interested to see what else might be out there. What other pieces of hardware? What other pieces of software, Right. We are in a very good place right now to see some advances in the scanner radio hobby. So what are your thoughts on TDMA control channels? What, what are your concerns? How upset does this make you? It shouldn't make you that upset. But I'd love to know what you think about the change now in P25 and what it means to our scanner radio hobby. You can go to scannerschool.com slash session 191 and leave your comment there. Or if you're listening to this podcast over on YouTube, just go ahead down below and leave a comment and I'll make sure to read and reply to your comment on YouTube. I'm trying my best to reply and at least acknowledge all of the comments I see over on the YouTube platform. It's hard. It, it's hard to, 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 <laughs> to keep up on all of the feedback that I get, to be honest with you. But I do read everything that comes in. I may not be able to reply to it. So again, make sure you subscribe to our podcast by going to your favorite podcast player of choice and click and subscribe. You can also subscribe to our newsletter over at scannerschool.com. Make sure you check us out on social media. We've got some really, really good stuff coming. I've given a sneak peek to our Patreon supporters and they were laughing all through it. So what does that mean? Make sure you're following us over on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And uh, if you guys are on LinkedIn, we're over there now too. So with that, my name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this is Scanner School, where we teach you everything to know about the Scanner Radio Hobby. Homework for you guys, because this is school, by the way. Share this podcast episode with somebody. Somebody you know that might be in an area that has these the Duke or the American Power Energy Systems. Share this podcast episode with them so you understand what is going on, so they know that they shouldn't panic about these systems. 731, we will catch you all again next week.